let's discuss scales that are a little bit more grandiose than just looking at a single galaxy. Let's talk about superclusters, such as the one where technically our galaxy is located as well. The supercluster known as Laniakea, an enormous massive structure confirmed to exist back in 2014 that essentially contains approximately 100,000 different galaxies consisting of various smaller galactic groups, including, of course, the local group where the Milky Way is located. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this today is because of a recent study that tried to potentially solve one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology, the mystery of the Hubble tension. The mystery of the expansion of the universe not being exactly the same in different locations around the universe. The universe seems to have different acceleration of expansion depending on where exactly you look and what sort of a measurement you conduct. And though initially this was assumed to be possibly some kind of a mistake or maybe a problem with statistical analysis, time and time again multiple observations and multiple calculations using different methods seem to come up with very different values for what's known as the Hubble constant. That value that we use to measure the expansion of the universe. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of the recent discoveries and specifically this recent study that kind of tackles this idea in more detail and tries to understand if maybe some of the tension here or some of the issues we're having with measuring the expansion is actually a result of the Milky Way galaxy moving in a certain way inside Laniakea. In other words, maybe there is no tension, no Hubble tension at least, and maybe all of this is just observational bias. So, is it? Well, first of all, when it comes to other types of biases, such as for example measurement biases or potentially measurement errors, extremely recently various observations from the James Webb Space Telescope definitively confirmed that there seems to be no bias coming from measurements of what's known as Cepheid variables. In other words, observations using certain types of stars seem to be pretty accurate, which confirms the values for the Hubble constant to be somewhere around 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. In essence, what this means is that every single million parsec, or approximately 3.26 million light years, the universe accelerates its expansion by approximately 73 kilometers per second. And so by being right here, we might be moving nowhere, but by being somewhere just beyond the Andromeda galaxy, the actual space-time itself, the universe itself, is going to be moving away from us at approximately 73.5 km per second. Although here, an important side note, quite a few galaxies out there, including the Andromeda, are actually moving toward us. And that's obviously for various reasons, usually gravitational reasons, but sometimes, as you can learn from one of the videos in the description, it's also because they're located in certain clusters, galactic clusters, that sort of spin. And as they spin, some galaxies appear to move toward us, while other galaxies appear to move away from us. And so there are quite a lot of different reasons why certain galaxies appear to be moving toward us. Nevertheless, on average, pretty much most galaxies out there are moving away from us, and they move away faster and faster, the farther away they are from planet Earth. But when it comes to measuring all of these effects and trying to figure out all of these constants, astronomers rely on what's known as the distance candles. Essentially, various well-known objects out there that allow us to measure distances to, for example, different galaxies, usually through some very common means, normally by detecting certain types of stars or certain types of supernova. A few videos in the description explain this better. But quite often, we also assume that all of this is more or less equal in every direction. In other words, the assumption here is that we are stationary and everything moves around us. But we know that this is not true because previous measurements from just over a decade ago discovered that the Milky Way galaxy is moving in a certain direction toward Centaurus constellation at approximately 600 km per second. And so this is already a bit of a bias. Our galaxy is definitely not stationary and is definitely moving in a certain direction. But to try to discover more about this, Scientists behind the recent study in the description wanted to explore this even more thoroughly by studying Laniakea, the enormous structure that we're part of, containing 100,000 galaxies, with a lot of them gravitationally connected into one single object. Although once again, a bit of a side note, recent calculations suggested that at some point Laniakea might actually fall apart because some of these clusters are moving fast enough to eventually be dispersed into surrounding area. 
And so at some point in the future, it's probably going to become something a little bit different. But here we're talking about super distant future in billions of years. Nevertheless, when it comes to Lunyakea, the way that it's currently described and defined is through another really famous mystery slash unusual structure known as the Great Attractor. In case you've never heard of this, it's essentially some kind of a gravitational point located in the region right here, with some galaxies moving toward it really fast, up to about 700 km per second, or potentially even faster. But the thing about this particular unusual object is that it's inside what's known as the Zone of Avoidance, a very dusty region near the galactic disk, where it's basically almost impossible to see anything except for certain frequencies like the infrared. But even the images that were taken here, such as for example this one by Hubble Space Telescope, do not reveal what's going on here. And so it's known as the Great Attractor because it seems to attract various galaxies toward it, but for all we know, it's just a result of various galaxies moving toward a single point, with this just being that particular point. So there could be absolutely nothing here, or maybe there is something here, such as some kind of intersection of intergalactic dark matter. Either way though, thousands of galaxies are moving toward this point, and it represents the center of Leniakea, serving as a kind of a gravitational focal point for many different galactic groups that all seem to flow into this area. So basically, by definition, Leniakea is essentially all of the clusters in the vicinity, and here we're talking about 500 million light years in terms of diameter, with all of them somehow gravitationally connected, and all of them moving toward a central point the Great Attractor. And so knowing all of this, the researchers behind the recent study wanted to figure out if maybe all of the Hubble tension stuff is because of all of these motions, basically because the galaxies are moving toward a certain point, creating a kind of a bias. And to try to solve all of this, they created detailed models of all of this, combining it with the Hubble constant derived from recent studies. And their discovery suggests there is a bias, but it seems to be in the opposite direction as in, the Hubble tension is even worse than we initially thought. Or in other words, their study doesn't just confirm the Hubble tension, it confirms a bias of about 2 to possibly 3% that makes the Hubble tension just a little bit smaller than it actually is, with all of this being the result of the galactic motion inside Linea Kea. In other words, it makes the cosmological mystery even more mysterious, or even more unsolvable than before. And the biggest question is, of course, do we have any solutions to any of this? Because along with the confirmations from the James Webb Space Telescope, it presents us with the universe that expands at different velocities depending on when you look. And well, right now, every single explanation is very, very hypothetical. For example, maybe the universe transformed in the last few billions of years by changing certain types of energy into something else. So maybe number of neutrinos, number of matter particles, even dark matter itself, could have transformed into dark energy, accelerating the universe. Or maybe certain particles were actually acting as particles when the universe was hot, and then started to act as something else when the universe cooled down. Or maybe, actually there are a lot of maybes, and at the moment, nobody knows what's going on. This is probably the biggest mystery in the entire cosmology, with the second biggest being the so-called SA tension that you can learn more about in the description. Nevertheless, these extremely accurate observations and calculations once again confirm that there is definitely something we still don't understand, and the universe is definitely more mysterious than we ever thought as well. But more importantly, we really have no idea what's going on with the so-called dark universe, the dark matter and the dark energy. Which is exactly why ESA recently launched the so-called Euclid telescope that has just begun its operation and you can learn about the Euclid mission in the two videos in the description below. And so we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some updates or once something else is discovered, either about Oniakea or the mysterious Hubble attention, but at least for now, we're just going to have to leave it as a mystery. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.